As part of my ongoing series on common low-sec frigate fits, I bring to you this evening common low-sec Minimitar frigate fits. The Minimitar combat frigates are the Rifter and the Breacher. Um, and I feel like the Breacher is one of the, if not the best, T1 combat frigates, and the Rifter is one of the worst. Um, often with frigates that are maybe a little weaker, I can find a fit I like that maybe tries to counter some particular setup or do some particular thing. I've still yet to find a Rifter fit that I like much. But you'll find a lot of them in space. Um, you'll also find a lot of breachers, and they have sort of different uh, spots in the meta. Um, so the breacher is famous for its dual rep setup, where you've got a medium ancillary shield booster and a small ancillary armor repper. And I think this often surprises new players because first they just throw whatever they want on a ship, but then later they hear, um, don't dual tank things, don't tank in shield and armor, don't tank in hull and armor, whatever. And for most applications in need, that makes a ton of sense. Um, it matters a lot less for frigates because you're not getting reps from anyone. Um, and often with frigates, you don't have a lot of slots, you maybe won't fit a ton of resist modules. Um, and so it's just all raw EHP. And then when you're putting modules on the ship, you sort out your damage, you sort out your range control, you figure out what range do you want to be at, how are you going to be there, um, how are you going to tank the ship, and then maybe at some point it's just a question of how can I get as much EHP as possible because it's a big part of uh, being the guy who wins the fight. Um, and so if you give the dual rep breacher a totally normal rocket launcher, AB scram web, medium ancillary shield booster, of course, because the hull has a bonus to shield booster amount in addition to rocket rate of fire, so we're gonna want some sort of shield booster on there. And because we don't also have space for cap booster and because shield boosters take tons of cap compared to armor boosters, no one really fits a shield booster here unless they totally change the fit and go cap stable or um, something else. Uh, but the medium and slurry shield booster consumes no cap, so it feels like a real natural fit. So you throw that in there and you get real nice heated amount. And then in the lows, you fit a damage control and a ballistic control. And now we've got one slot left over and eight CPU and eight grid. And what's the most value we can get for a low slot? Um, oh, it's also worth noting that nothing else on the ship really uses cap. There's no cap drain, and so we've got a low slot, eight grid, and eight CPU, and a bunch of unused cap, which we can turn into another 2.33 K EHP if we get all of the reps off. Um, and so it all kind of flows very naturally. Uh, having the two mods is actually a big advantage in that you can run them both at the same time. Um, and so it makes it much harder to burst through or alpha through the damage than it would if you only had one of those mods. Um, the breacher has kind of a thin buffer. 2.92 is not super tanky. Um, and it can melt a bit if you are not attentive on the active reps. When I first started flying these, I would take one out, get in a fight, and a couple times I died with no reps off. Um, the medium ancillary shield booster ticks harder than the small ancillary armor repper. Um, and shield boost cycles hit at the start of the cycle, whereas armor hit at the end of the cycle. And with max skills, he did it's going to be 3.88, 3.82 seconds uh, cycle time. And so the damage is coming in. And we want to get, we're almost definitely going to get all of these because they hit at the start of the cycle and because we have the nine big boost ones. We'd like to get as many small ancillary armor reps off as possible. Um, and if it looks like we're, we're not going to have enough time, we're going to bleed into hull, we can always pulse the medium ancillary shield booster. So as a result of all that, um, what you want to do is bleed through the shield and then try to tank them in armor 
and then use the MASB to cover up all the times that wouldn't work. And um, if any of you have played other online role-playing games where you're a healer and you've got like a short, expensive heal and uh, a slow, inexpensive heal, the SAAR is your slow, inexpensive heal and the MASB is your fast, expensive heal. So you try to save this as much as possible and use this. As soon as this can't do the job, you're firing this off. The Having the double mods um, really makes it uh, hard to, if it's flown well, hard to do anything but eventually wear down its large amount of EHP. Um, you know, four in the MSB, two in the SAAR, and three in the buffer. You can see a 9k EHP, no drugs, no implants. Um, obviously we can increase that with the various augmentation things. And then the other thing about the Breacher is it's a pretty fast hull, 365. 365 base. Um, so as fast as or faster than all of the T1 combat frigates. Um, and rockets apply as a function of your opponent's speed and SIG and not your speed. And so you can just fly perfectly defensively. You can fly in whatever way minimizes damage. And as long as you have a web and your opponent isn't flying a, a succubus or something like that, then your rockets are gonna apply fine. So you're gonna do your not very good DPS, but it'll keep going at constant, and you've got this huge buffer, and you can fly in a way to mitigate as much damage as possible, whether that's orbiting, um, or using range, uh, you know, if it's something like a Merlin, uh, they're almost always blaster fit, this breacher would want to set up at the edge of scram kite range, say seven and a half kilometers, eight kilometers, um, the Merlin would not apply very good damage, the breacher would be firing rockets using the drones, um, but so 160 DPS is nothing like the Merlin can do, but if you are at the scram, edge of scram kite range and they've got null loaded, they're going to be doing like 100 DPS, and the Merlin has, let's say, 6k EHP, and it's big DPS, but uh, with 6k HV versus 9k EHP and 160 DPS versus 100, it's a really easy contest for the Breacher. Um, it's a dual web Merlin, they'll have range control. You can still try to orbit them, get as much traversal as you can. Um, every bit of traversal you get is just that much more mitigated damage. So, uh, Breacher, very strong. Um, just, it's fast, it's tanky, and it can kind of consistently put out that damage. Um, it's, it, it is uh, micro-intensive. you got to make sure to not forget about your drones. Um, if they start shooting them, you're going to want to pull them. You've got to manage the tank. You'll also want to, at, at a minimum, be giving some command about orbit, keep it range, approach, whatever uh, you think is necessary to mitigate your opponent's damage as much as possible. Um, so this package of things is what you have to think about when you engage the Breacher. Um, the Rifter is the other combat frigate. And for all of this mobility, defensive goodness, I feel like the Rifter is just sort of disappointing. Um, so it's got a fall off bonus and a damage bonus. And I love the Atron's fall off bonus, but then the Atron's really fast to position itself. Um, auto cannons have, oh, the other thing about the breach is a selectable damage, which is a nice feature. Mostly you shoot explosive because most things in Faction Warfare are armor tanked, but it's nice to have options. Um, auto cannons also give you options. Small auto cannons, not a um, especially inspiring weapon system. Uh, the damage is not great. We can load hail. Still not great. 192 hot. So you're doing about let's say 20% less um, damage than a comparable blaster frigate. And there's not a whole lot that makes up for it. So like hail is explosive damage. Most things are armor tank. That's nice. But like if you do the math, it doesn't come out ahead. It's fast, but the fitting sort of tempts you into fitting a plate. I have 18 CPU left. I could 
Oh, I could compact the web and then compact the gyro and maybe add another gyro. And maybe that's... Um, how over am I? Yeah. Maybe I don't even have to compact the web. I do have to compact the web. So I love a T2 web because the 60% slow is better um, than a 55% than a slow. It makes a difference. It's noticeable. It's like more noticeable than hull speeds. Uh, okay, so you could do this, but that's not inspiring, all right? Slightly more. It's still less than a blaster ship, but now we have less buffer. Um, and I don't feel like the hull gives uh, a ton of flexibility to do other things. Um, one, two hundred. And then a gyro. Um, the plate slows it down a little bit. Like 50 meters a second in the end. Base speed's the same as the breacher, 365. Um, three mids, 80 scram web because uh, we'd like to be able to try to control range. Something is wonky on this. I couldn't figure this out before. It should be like 2.18 and then we heat it, 2.33. The rifter does not have uh, armor. It doesn't have an armor ripper penalty. And other ships with no resist mods get more than this. But, so anyway, slightly more there, 2.33, let's say, plus this 4.21. Total of 6k HP, it's not bad. It's not amazing, damage is okay. Um, if you're flying against slower stuff and you can position yourself, uh, conceivably you could sit out at the edge of scram range and do... Some damage, you could do I don't know, like 110 damage. So that's all right. It's not amazing. Um, but if it's, again, something like a Merlin and it's only doing 100 damage to you and you've got selectable damage, um, you know, you can do some of that, brawl certain ships and kite certain ships. Um, I really, I just, I, I find the fitting space together with the plate and the fact that like it needs its speed to try to use it's not very good damage. Uh, frustrating. Um, that's maybe you want to come up with a really good rifter fit. I've fiddled around with it. I, I got nothing. I don't have a really good rifter fit. It's all right. It's a fine frigate. It can win fights. You see a lot of them in space. You have to take this into account. Generally, I feel pretty comfortable brawling them in brawling ships. And generally, I feel pretty comfortable scram kiting them in scram kite ships. Um, But your mileage may vary. So you have to think about what is this package of things? How do I feel about it? Do I want to get into a fight with a ship that has these stats? Um, the Minotaur attack frigate is the slasher. And I uh, really like the slasher. I think it's a really fun frigate. I spent a lot of time flying it. Um, it's extraordinarily engageable. Uh, Almost everybody will fight a slasher and almost everything, which is nice. It's fast, that's nice. Um, the bad, the weapon systems are auto cannons, and you've just heard, heard me talking about how much I don't like auto cannons. Um, it is utility high, which is nice. And the 4 2 slot layout, I like better than 3 3. I like mid slots, they're fun, you can do stuff with them. Um, this is the most common, roughly the most common. Uh, slasher fit. People like new tracking disruptor SAAR. Um, and I love flying against this fit. I think it's very weak. Um, it's so I tried to make the best version of this that I could that was most like something I would fly. Yeah, I don't, you mostly don't see people with uh, multiple bulkheads. The 2.8 buffer, not great. If we did not have these, 2.28, awful. Um, 
and like there's a little bit more in the reps but it's real modest um i don't like tracking disruptors uh in general <laughs> people find them upsetting and that makes me sad because i want my opponents to have fun um but even worse than that uh they're just they're bad they only work if you have the right script loaded and you have a lot of range control um and if you get the wrong script loaded if you fly in the wrong way uh, but also just like the vagaries of ships moving around like when two ships are orbiting each other um and then like one of them double clicks in space and you're like you're still going to keep up some traversal but as they head off in that line it's going to fall some um, my experience is that flying around in this ship, one of two things happens. So the first is that you just get blapped because at some moment your orbit got shaken or you had the wrong script loaded or something went wrong uh, and you just you can't take hardly any damage at all. Um, or you capture yourself out. Four mid slots is a lot of mid slots plus a new plus a small ancillary armor upper. I generally won't fit an SAAR and a newt unless I have a cap booster or something. Um, four mids also is a drain on the cap, and it's not as big as the SAAR and newt, but it adds up. Everything adds up. Um, I used the... No, that's the cap. That's the... Two of the mids don't really count. <laughs> Two of the mids do. Um... So this is a really common fit. I generally assume a slasher is going to fly like this. If I'm afraid of this, I want to engage, but mostly I'll engage with almost everything. Mostly I'll fit like this, and it's an easy kill. Um, I much prefer uh, medium shield extender um, slasher. And you can do this in different ways. I have one that I did it sort of as a brawling setup, where I'm just trying to do a bunch of damage and kill them. I don't have a newt. Uh, the newt's good too. If you're going to be newting them, you probably want to orbit to mitigate as much damage as possible to drag out the fight, to put the pressure on their cap. With the medium shield extender tank, we don't have a small ancillary in the low, which frees up our cap, which makes it so that we're not under tremendous cap pressure ourselves. A little more synergy there. And then because you're always uh, orbiting, tracking matters a ton. It's a fast haul too. And uh, the 125s have less damage and less range, but better tracking. And so you actually may end up doing more damage with them, but the real perk is that they use almost no fitting at all. And so even on the slasher without a ton of fitting, we can squeeze in medium shield extender, uh, newt, everything we need, all the stuff. You can fiddle around with it some. If you're going all in on the newt, you could drop the gyro. You can bling it and upgrade the defense field extenders. I like the slasher, I think it's fun to fly. I don't care for this one. This, I think, is way more fun. Um, I don't see these a lot. Your mileage may vary. The faction frigates are the Republic Fleet Firetail and the Vigil Fleet Issue. Um, and all of these hulls have uh, a lot of potential variability. But I feel like mostly they, they look the same a lot, especially the RFF. Um, I think you can do a lot of things with the RFF. Uh, again, auto cannons, uh, well, uh, projectile turrets. So if you go brawling auto cannons, that's not great. Um, this is the artillery fit. It's designed to scram kite. It's intended as sort of a anti-brawler, anti-active tank setup the damage is not great uh 203 damage for a faction frigate it's okay it's not amazing um but the alpha is really good and it's funny to think of alpha winning fights in a frigate one with v1 um, unlike the big fleet fights but uh the relative cycle times of the arty and the small ancillary armor rep um They'll get two cycles in. Like you'll fire an arty shot, they'll get two cycles, you'll fire an arty shot, they'll get one cycle, you'll fire an arty shot, they'll get two cycles, you'll fire an arty shot, they'll get one cycle. And so what ends up happening is like let's imagine it's a frigate um, that can 
let's say we alpha um, for the sake of argument all of the armor and they can fill it up with two small ancillary armor reps so um, you know we shoot a shot or two and their shield's gone and then we fire into their armor and they lose the armor and they get one small ancillary rep and they're at half armor and they get two small ancillary reps and they're at full armor um, then we alpha the armor again and they get one small ancillary rep and then we hit them again and they lose that armor and a bunch of hull and that sort of pattern of the 2-1-2-1 two, one, two, one, um, happens in such a way that you chew through their hull kind of fast unless they have a lot of buffer um, this setup's obviously worse against buffer where you can't chip away their hull like that it has fantastic range control um, the RFF is one of the fastest hulls in the game I think its speed is 420 410 um, so it's just a hair slower than the Atron um, but also it's two webs right and so uh, super fast hull double web um, sits out of scram kite range if a friend shows up you can just line out you have a ton of range control and you're already at the end of scram range um, it's a really strong ship uh, if they're uh, brawling something they're going to have a really hard time projecting out to where you're at um, the only problem with this setup is that um, damage is a little low EHP is a little low um, but that also it's kind of predictable like everyone knows this is what an RFF is going to look like um, and I didn't make up another sample fit to show you guys but you can put auto cannons and then rocket or an, uh, uh, newt here uh, newt opens up some possibilities you can double tank it like a breacher you can put a medium shield extender in here there's, just, there's lots of options and they'll each have a different engagement profile and um, there's a lot to be said for surprising your, own, your opponents. They expect fit A, but you're flying something different. Maybe you give up some matches that you would have won otherwise. You know that you can avoid them. They don't know you're flying a different fit that has a different engagement profile. Um, and so they're delighted to engage. Hooray, good fight for me. But it turns out you've got a surprise for them. Um, don't see a ton of that. I see mostly either terrible fits or this fit. Uh, and then the last one is the Vigil Fleet issue. And um, there's a lot of different fits. This is actually maybe even more flexible than the um, RFF. Again, like the Breacher with rockets, you can fly defensively and focus on uh, just minimizing incoming damage. Um, you could dual tank this one. It doesn't have the uh, shield boost bonus of the Breacher, but it'll still get a lot of HP as more buffer. Um, am I telling tales? No, it has more buffer. Um, and you'll still get the, the damage. You can fit a Newt, um, maybe with a medium shield extender. Uh, lots of options. But you have to be aware of this not universal, but fairly common fit and think about how will I feel if I get on grid and it's fit like this? So there's a not very often used strategy called web kiting. Um, brawlers want to be on top, you know, zero from you. Scram kiters want to be at seven, eight kilometers. Proper kiters want to be further out. Um, if they're solo, still holding point, I guess, but uh, not in scram range, certainly. Maybe they want to be at 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers. Um, the web kiting idea is to hang out at like 10 to 15 kilometers. Um, you can do it with an executioner, or uh, beams, uh, AB web long point, and then you like heat the web and get out to 12, 13 kilometers. Um, and maybe you're fighting brawlers and they can't project any damage at all out there, and so you're real fragile, but it's okay. I've seen people do it with rifters. Um, it's an extraordinarily natural fit for the visual fleet issue because of the web bonus. So you can keep them webbed while you're sitting 12, 13, 14 kilometers away. Um, and if their damage doesn't reach out to you, uh, it's going to be a pretty easy fight. Um, if you get caught at zero, you'll get out brawled. The damage is not huge. HP is not huge. 
You get caught up there and can't move away, but, but this is also a very fast hull. Uh, either equal with or 10 slower than the Rifter. Yeah, 10 slower. So 400. Same speed as a Condor. Um, and so it's a fast hull, and it's got two webs. And how fast are you going to be held 13 kilometers away? And what can you do when they're 13 kilometers away from you? Um, is a thing you've got to think about when you consider engaging a vigil fleet issue. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching. <laughs>